Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. I'm Jeremy Lesniak, and today I'm joined by a name that some of you may know, and if not, I would all but guarantee you would recognize this man, Mr. Rick Worthy. Who is he? If you don't know, I'm going to tell you in a minute. If you're new to the show, hang tight because we've got a great episode for you, but a few things that you might not be aware of. We do all the things that we do out of a love, out of a passion for traditional martial arts and traditional martial artists worldwide. Our mission is to connect, educate, and entertain as many of you as possible on the way to a very simple, very lofty goal of getting everyone in the world to train for just six months, even just six months. If we could get everybody in the world to train, I think you would agree with me. It would make the world a much better place. Until then, we will do what we are doing. And what do we do? Well, if you go to whistlekick.com, you'll see all the things that we do. We've got this show, but we also have a lot of other stuff. We have books, we have training programs, we host events, we make products. Check us out there. Use the code PODCAST15, get yourself some training equipment or uh, a training program, or maybe a shirt or a hat. We do lots of great stuff, and it's a lot of fun to do all the stuff that we do, including the show. WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com is the place you go if you want to go deeper on one of the episodes, perhaps this one. Perhaps you're you're listening and you think, you know, I want to check out photos later. Go to WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com. Rick sent over a number of photos, and I bet you'll recognize quite a few of those photos. I did. What else can you do? Well, you can join our Patreon. We have a Patreon that has exclusive bonus stuff, and it's all over the place in a really good way. When we have something, we're like, you know what? This isn't going to make it out to the feed, but let's put it out to Patreon. The Patreon contributors, some of them are in as little as $2 a month. Some are spending $100 a month, and we have tiers in between. But what do we do at every level? We deliver overwhelming value. We give you stuff that you're not going to find anywhere else. Stuff that is great. Like at the upper tiers, you can either have me train you, you want me to help you work on something? We'll do that on a monthly basis. Or if you're a school owner, we have a school owner's mastermind that you can only get to if you're part of the Patreon. You can write it off. It's a business expense. <gasps> but there's also bonus merch and book drafts and training program drafts and lots of cool stuff that comes through. And people love it. And how do I know? Because they don't stop. Now, today's episode with Rick Worthy, this is a man who's been acting professionally for 30 years. And while he's not a martial arts actor, I wouldn't call him that. He's done martial arts as an actor. But really, this is a story of someone who started out very early as a passionate martial artist, and it set him on a trajectory. But not in the way that I think a lot of people might expect this episode to go. We've had actors who trained as kids, and they became either martial arts actors or, you know, stunt folks. That's not Rick's story. And I love it because it's not a story that we've had on a bunch of times. It's his story. And he's the only one that can tell it. I had a wonderful time talking to him. And I'm sure you're going to have a wonderful time hearing or watching it. Here we go. Hey, Rick. How are you? Thank you so much for for the invitation. It's been, it's been a number of weeks. So, you know, um, life happens and yeah. turned 56 last month. And, oh, uh, happy and birthday. Europe. Ah, thank you. <laughs> another another trip around the sun. That's how yeah. I look at it. <laughs> How'd you celebrate? Uh, I celebrated actually. I, w- I was actually coincidentally doing a convention for the TV show Supernatural. Yeah. Um, just south of London. Um, and um, so I flew over to London. Probably my birthday is March twelfth. They flew me over like March 9th. I had a day to kind of recover from jet lag and. Uh, um, the convention was, you know, you know, conventions, I'm pretty sure you do, um, full on like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And, and, uh, it turns out the last day of the convention was my birthday. So everybody's saying happy birthday to me. And well, that's you know, awesome. it was like one of those things. It was cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was it's, cool. If you did, um, you know, I would assume if you're, if you're still doing conventions that you dig conventions, right? People either love, love that them. energy or they don't. I love them, Matt. Yeah. I, I think it's one of the coolest one of the, probably for sure one of the coolest things ever, you know, is to do a convention, particularly for sci-fi, horror, um, you know, genre television. It's 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 it, it, it it's it, it really really is part of my life. But I just mm. can't do them all the time. I need to do maybe I need like three, maybe four good ones a year, and then they take a lot know, out that, of that's you. it. The first time I it went can, to a convention, yeah. uh, Andrew and I went 
what was that 2021 we went together right. to rhode island comic-con right it's the closest yeah. one for us you i love there? rhode island comic Con. yeah, yeah. And it was great and and a, a good friend of mine been on the show craig uh kind of like gave us the lay of the land and, and showed us everything right there. and i was as a spectator i was exhausted after day one <laughs> so i could only imagine what it's like you know shaking hands and, and it's not like i'm out of shape or something it's just being around that many people and that much energy it was, it was intense but I, you know i always say it's the one place where i feel like i can just be myself you know and and, and you know there's no pretense there's no on it's just me I'm with my fellow nerds, you know, and, and um, sadly, I haven't, I've worked with other actors. They don't understand what it's like to be at a convention, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I was on a show called The Magicians, um, and I think me and maybe two other actors, they sort of, you know, like, we we, we know the convention's yeah. world, really, you know, and, but the other actors, they were, they were like, well, what is it? You know, I'm like, well, you should, you should go to one and you know, you happen to be on the show where we will probably get invi invited. <laughs> you know, so um, uh, I think I think a couple of them are starting to do some of the conventions. So yeah. nice, nice. You said something that, that's kind of interesting that it's at these convent conventions that you get to be yourself. Yeah, yeah. And that's something that uh, I, I say say more about that because I think I get it, but I probably don't. Yeah. Well, I feel like I can just kind of just. Just nerd out, man. Mm -hmm. You know, and just and just be Rick. Um, and you know, when I'm when I'm sitting down, you know, at Christmas dinner, you know, with the family, you know, I'm, I'm me and maybe my maybe my nephew, my youngest nephew, maybe like we're the kind of the nerds in the family. Like we mm -hmm. love science fiction, we love Star Trek, we love Battlestar. You know, um, yeah. Uh, you know, we love all the all the um, all the stuff that you know that that I grew up with, and, and, and for his generation, he's in his twenties. He's growing up with as well, you know, uh, you know the, the the new Star Wars movies and all the different Star Treks and stuff like that. And yeah. um, I like when I'm there, like I buy Funko Pops. I do the same thing I did when I, since I was nine years old. I I buy stuff. I walk around. I get comic books. You know, you have better I'm, access you know, now, right? You could probably go yeah, up to anybody yeah. now and and say, "Hey, can can I talk to you?" And they actually talk to you yeah. instead of you know thirty yeah. seconds. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, I, I, I met I met Lou Ferrigno when I was about nine or ten years old at um, Motor City Comic Con because I grew up in Detroit. Yep. And um, it's funny now because now we we're both on the convention circuit, right. you know. And I will be at a convention. I think he was at. Gosh, I don't know if he was at Rhode Island this last year, but he was at another one I was at. I think Salt Lake City Comic Con, maybe last year or the year before. And my friend dragged me over to his table and and and, and said. It, and it was so embarrassing because he said, he said, <laughs> my friend Rick wants to meet you. He wants to tell you this whole story about meeting you when he was nine years old. And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but he's the yeah. best guy because, it, it, again, 2021. Yeah. So Andrew, you know, did all this research about who was going to be there that had some martial arts training. And, and spoiler alert, right. audience, like this is this is why Rick's on the show today. Uh, we we actually were not just talking about Comic Con and and TV and movies, but we go over Lou right. Ferrigno because Andrew had some very specific martial arts questions, and you know we've got wow. press press yeah. badges on, and as soon as he right. figured out that we actually cared, he ignored his line for long enough that his handlers were kind of like, hey, um, you've been talking to these guys for like five <laughs> minutes, you gotta you gotta let right. him move on. And it was just it right. was such a trip. And it's something that I find really interesting, you know, when we talk to someone who is known for not martial arts, right? You're known for right. a ton of things. It's a long list. You know, to me, you're that character from Supernatural. I love that show. And as soon as, you oh, know, wow, thanks. <laughs> you know, that's just, <laughs> thank you. That's, um, <laughs> you know, as soon as Andrew said, yeah said that that he had talked to you and he was like, in case you don't remember, you know, this is who he is. I was like, oh, I know that guy, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, but that guy, <laughs> that guy, that guy, you, I, I mean, your, your, your IMDB list is probably the longest of anybody we've had on the show. And we've had some folks who oh, wow. a lot of stuff, you know? Wow. Um, and I guess, that, it, you know, I guess that's good. I, it's, that's good. I guess I, 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 I've been, I guess I've been around for a long time, man. You know, like you've been, when, when, when was your first role? When did you start? Age 20. Okay. So that's okay. 30, so 36, 
36 years ago, yeah. yeah. Um, and um, it, it's been making a living at it since age 26. So 30 years this, this year, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a long, um, it's a long time. It, it's a long time, yeah. You know, and I you know some of the guys that I sort of, you know, quote unquote, started with, you know, like some of them have left business. Um, others um, have, well, my best friend moved to Australia and mm. um, got married and teaches, teaches theater. And, uh, but he actually has a career there. So he does theater oh, there yeah. and he acts and, and, and he's in the new Elvis Presley movie. He has a really great, there's one scene, but he's really great in it. He plays a, a oh, reverend, nice. uh, reverend, I forget the character's name, but, uh, uh, but uh, his name is Charles Allen. And um, I was like, man, you're working more in Australia than, than you are in Hollywood. So stay, yeah. stay, stay there, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and, and the the kind of the anecdote of Elvis makes for a, a great segue because if you look at yes. the world, if you take a layer down, martial yeah. arts threads through all of it. You know, Bill Wallace has been yeah. on the show. Um, he's wow, been a friend, wow. right? Who started wow. teaching Elvis? Right, like if if you if you yeah. know your martial arts history, you see that it threads through everything. And I'm sure that we're we're going to get some of those threads, but yeah. we gotta we gotta roll the tape back all the way. Uh, when did you start trading? Wow. Well, I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, uh, in this in the early 70s. I was born in 1967, and I started training when I was about nine. So that's about 1976. That's um, super. I, I, we were, yeah. Kids, kids yeah. weren't training in the 70s. How did you pull that off? I begged my my brother and I begged. I think it was a it was a it was a, it was a actually it was a fantastic question. I okay. think I've I've always wanted to talk about about this, yeah. and and I just want to thank you first of all, and you and Andrew for um, the invitation because um, very few people have, have either they don't know how to talk about martial arts or you know what my history is or you know it's it's something that they don't they, they don't know know it themselves, so they they're not sure how to ask. They just usually just go to stunt fighting. Right. So. Um, when I was a kid, we were we were these we were in love with Enter the Dragon and all things Bruce Lee. Um, and um, there was a there was a one little movie theater that was playing all the Bruce Lee movies on Saturdays and Sundays at matinee. And um, we begged our mom and dad to, to please take us there so we can go see you know our, our, our this guy we kept hearing about and who we loved so much named Bruce Lee. So um, you know we would go and you know back at that at, at that time it was what maybe two bucks, three bucks to go see a matinee or something. Not even that, probably. Um, and um, they eventually let us ride our bikes to the theater. And like We would go back and see it again and again and again, you know. And um, we we all collectively, me and my brother and some of the young kids in our group, we all fell in love with, with Bruce Lee. Um, and I begged, literally begged my mom and dad to please l let us study you know and we were we were young so we couldn't really intellectualize it at that time we were like please let us study karate you know, <laughs> you know and, yeah. and for us that it, um what it, what it was for us was taekwondo um, korean karate and and um uh, i studied um under master lee i'll never forget him i'll never forget him to the day i don't I'll never forget him and um he was he was pretty tough on me but he believed in me and, and he I, even now i still remember the, the things that, that he taught, taught me you know mm. and um i remember some of our, our my, my classmates and and um i had a crush on this one girl <laughs> she was but and she was we we sparred one time i'll never forget she got she she hit me pretty quick and i'll never forget how how, how terrific she was you know and um did, did that did that and, increase the crush or or, or did that you know, i i think did probably it did. <laughs> yeah but you know like we we were just you know i was just a kid my brother didn't continue but i did you know like because i i loved it so much so we moved to a different part of detroit and um even then you know this is probably not a great idea to let your kid be on a bus you know, going anywhere in the big city. But, you know, I, I, again, I begged my mom and dad, you know, I'll be there. I'll, I'll call on the pay phone when I'm there, you know, the whole thing. So they let me go continue studying, you know, and um, which is typically like all day Saturday afternoon type thing. And I think maybe it was maybe one other day, but I just remember it was Saturday was the day, you know, and then um, I would uh, get on the bus and head back home. And um I, I carried it with me, you know. Um, sadly, um, I, you know, I never achieved my black belt. Um, I, 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 it was one, one of those things that I, I felt like I, I was like so, so very close, mm. you know. I remember correctly, 
and you can help me with this. Um, the ranking that I remember was white, yellow, green, blue, purple, brown, black. And I got up to purple. And um, I, um, I, I just remember that I, I kept thinking, man, I just hope we don't move because I, I really want to, I really want to, I want to, I want to continue, you know. But we ended up moving to the suburbs of Detroit in 1980, 1981, right at the really sort of beginning of the crack, uh, yeah. the crack cocaine epidemic. You know, and we got, we got the hell out of it. You know, so I look back on it now. I'm like, I'm glad we did leave the inner city, man, because I, I'm sure some of those kids that I grew up with, they probably aren't even here today. You know? yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so a few, a few things. W were you in specifically yeah. a kids class? Um, I, I didn't remember it was like a youth. It was like a youth class. Okay. Yeah, that was and, um, really I, uncommon back then. We've had a lot yeah, of folks who started okay. training at, at, at that age. And or I should say at that time, and quite often yeah. what we hear is, you know, I was the only kid in with the adults and they tolerated me. And it wasn't until I was, you know, 14 or 15 that I really could kind of hang. Wow. Um, right. So what, what yeah. you know, you said your your brother stopped training. You obviously stopped training when you moved. Yeah. I'm sure we can talk in retrospect about a lot of impact that that had on your upbringing, but what about at the time when you were that kid, were you aware of, of anything other than this is fun? Um, I, I'm sure there, I think I, I was able to, I think ascertain some of the sort of the wisdom of it all, you know, and sort of the, 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 those gems of those pearls of life wisdom, uh, if you will. And, and um, I knew it was uh, like for us, you know, we were poor kids in, you know, predominantly, Poor, predominantly black neighborhood growing up in Detroit in the 70s. Um, there were a couple of white families, a couple of Asian families, a couple of um, Indian families, uh, as in East India, um, as in India. And, um, you know, we, we, we were, it was sometimes pretty rough neighborhood, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Um, thank God, um, you know, we, you know, not to go into a whole different discussion about, about, the, about the hood or the inner city, but um, when we were there, you know, kids weren't shooting each other. You know, it, it, it was more like there were, but there was for sure street fights and yeah. brawls and, you know, maybe a, like a knife. Like this kid pulled a knife out of me one time and he stole my paint set of all things, you know. Nowadays, the kid would get shot for that, you know. Right. So I think the, like we were, I, I was aware that this was, this, it, it, you know, this was something that I could potentially use if I had to, mm. but also not use as well. You know, like it was, it, it was the sort of thing where, like I always, you know, I was, I was always, I was taught, you know, to, to, to not fight, but if you mm. have to fight, absolutely have to, you know, then fight with everything you have, you know, uh, fight that, to win. And was that just out of your martial arts training or was that part of your uh, family? Martial arts training. training. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's interesting because my dad, who is to this day at age 80s, Still the toughest son of a bitch in the, <laughs> in the world. Yeah. He's straight from the streets, my dad, you know, yeah. but he's also like, you know, without having a college degree, he's, he's become an incredibly successful human being, you know, um, and uh, became a major um, uh, union rep for United Auto Workers, like, mm -hmm. like international rep. Yeah. So like, you know, for us, he's like a major, you know, success story and, but my dad grew up, and as you said, I, you know, I grew up tough. You know, I grew up hard. And so you guys wouldn't have to, you know. Mm. And I, but I remember him saying, look, if you ever feel like someone's going to take a swing at you, you swing first. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bit of Cobra Kai yeah. in there, huh? It, it, yeah. Strike first, strike hard. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So it is exactly right. I, I love I love. Um, and and there's you know um, there's something to that too right like actually I was talking about yeah. this uh, in another episode with someone this idea that when well, if you watch Karate Kid as a as a little kid it's very black right. and white you watch it again as an adult and you're like oh there's actually a lot of nuance in gray going on here. yeah man. yeah it's so true and I you know I <clears throat> I would love to meet um, the cast of Cobra Kai I haven't, actually I haven't met them but I, we've been in the same room at the same time we just yeah. have not actually met. Uh, Zepco, uh, the, uh, 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 Ralph Macchio, and, yeah. and uh, yeah, Gone. I, and um, uh, I saw the, uh, how do you pronounce his last name? Is it Z Zed, Zepco? Zepco. Zepco. 
uh, Zappa, yeah, Zappa, yeah. yeah. And um, I saw an interview that, that they did, um, I believe at a, probably San Diego Comic Con, and, and um, someone had someone had asked the question: Is the Karate Kid really about you, or is it about Ralph Macchio's character? And, and, you know, and I think he said, um, I think he said that that. He, 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 he he saw it as it's about his character, you know, yeah. and and it, it's a whole other discussion about what what's that movie really about? And it made me want it made me rethink the whole thing, man. You know, there's a there's a fun story arc, and and I've brought this up a few times on the show. If you've yeah. seen how how I met your mother, yeah, 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 they, yeah, yeah. they they thread that through, and and um, Neil Patrick Harris's character talking about, um, you know, the that that was the first time I'd ever heard that theory that. The Karate Kid was really about um, right. Johnny, not about Daniel. Exactly. Um, I, I think something just happened with my, my video. I lost your video, okay, but now go. you're there back. So yeah, yeah, no worries. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. No worries. Um, yeah. So you 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 said you read something that um, that said it, it it was really about the other it's, guy, not the other guy. You, you <laughs> can you can make the argument again. You know when. Yeah. When you you assume the Karate Kid, right? It's 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 got to be Daniel. It's got to be Ralph Macchio. But if you start right. to look at it, you know, again as an adult, you can make the argument. You know, might Daniel, be Johnny. It, it he spent a lot more time training. It meant a lot more to yeah. him for a longer period of time. Yeah, it's powerful. It's powerful. And to, uh, I'm so happy for these guys. I mean, as an actor, you know, it's like you know, I'm. I'm happy when, I think especially when 30 years go by, man, you know, and, you know, they get it 30, maybe 35 years and they get a chance to do it again yeah. and, and, you know, support their families and, and, and get, and get back in it, man. You know, like I, it, it, I thought that was so, as an older actor now, like I, I appreciate that, you know, when, 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 um, when, when they get, they get the second chance to, 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 to dance, you know, right. and it's, I think it's cool. I think it's so, so cool. And they, and, and they're great in the roles, you know, they're playing the older versions of these guys, you know, all grown up. <laughs> the, the first season, the, that first season when they dropped it on YouTube, I watched it and I, I said, this is about as perfect yeah. a season of television as I've as ever, of television seen. That you've ever seen. It was ever so seen. good. It was so, so good. It, yeah. Yeah. And, and and just with done with such care, you know, like they really wrote it right, directed it right, the actors performed it right. The, the, it's every shot is just right, you know, yep. and, and the music, everything just just, you know, I love the casting of the kids as well, um, as this as this, as this Cobra Kai students and the, you know, you know, like all, all of the casting was so spot on. And uh, I'm like, I'm like, you know, I, I lived in LA for 28 years. When the pandemic began, I sold everything, moved to New York, you know, and, oh, okay. and um, uh, yeah. And, um, and, and what, like what I, general park? Are you like, in the city or? At... Yeah. Uh, um, I'm, I'm in Manhattan. I'm like, okay. uh, not like near like uh, Gramercy Park, uh, like pretty much Gramercy Park. Yeah. <laughs> And um, uh, you know, completely different. I just need a completely different place sure. to be. You know? So yeah, but like I look at Cobra Kai, I'm like, hey, that's LA. <laughs> it's LA. It's like the Valley. It's I know that street. You know, <laughs> Ventura Boulevard. You know, the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe a little bit more truth in the uh, in the sentiment expressed going on than yes. some of us would would like to admit. Yeah. Well, here here's a question. You know, you talked about the 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 affinity for Bruce Lee and for those old Kung Fu flicks as a kid. Mm. And, you know, we can kind of split those films into two pieces, the martial arts piece and the film piece. And, you know, you check the, the martial arts piece. Yeah. Was your inspiration to go into acting at all tied to that experience? I, I'm i not sure. I, I, I would say that I think probably when I was a, a bit younger, I, I, I didn't maybe know it consciously at the time, but I think when I was about five, I, 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 I my mom and dad must have said, "This kid's different," <laughs> because you know, I, 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 I would, you know, um, uh, I would. My other heroes were Batman and Spider Man, mm. uh, so I had pretty much three heroes: Bruce Lee, Spider Man, Batman, Batman and Rondo, um, and had a crush. Uh, on Wonder Woman, <laughs> Linda well, Carter. Who, who didn't? Who didn't? <laughs> who didn't? 
who didn't? Yeah, I still do. And um, I, I remember just, I remember, um, man, just like just thinking that I was Spider Man, you know, when I was a kid. You know, I would crawl down the street, <laughs> you know, or uh, you know, like like my mom and dad were like, just let him, just let him be who he is. You know? <laughs> and um, uh, I, uh, especially around Halloween, you know, there was my top two costumes to be, you know, Batman or Spider Man. Um, I think I probably sort of on an unconscious level knew I, I, that I wanted to be other people, you know, or portray other people. Um, mm. But I, I didn't yet know that that, that would lead to, to becoming um, a stage actor and then actor in t- the TV and film. Mm. So um, it like it all sort of has, a, as you said, like a line. So there's like a nice through line of the whole thing. And um, um Thank God, man. I that when I when I studied when I studied martial arts, I was able to. I did a I did a mini series when I was um, about thirty eight for ABC Family called. Well, before that, I did an episode of Stargate, and um, I played um, a Goa'uld. If I'm saying it right, everyone has different pronunciation of it. And um, uh, uh, Peter DeLuise, Dom DeLuise's son, was directing the episode, and uh, Christopher Judge. Um, it was his episode. He, it was his creation, his story, his villain, his, you know, he wrote the, the script and they, they, they looked at my audition on tape from LA and they were in Vancouver filming and, um, I got the job. So when I got the set, they're all standing around waiting to meet me to see what I look like and, you know, how tall I am physically. And then, and then the first question they said was, well, the first thing they said was, thanks for coming. I said, I'm happy to be here. This is the, the, the first question that they had was, can you do anything? I, and I said, what do you mean? I said, can you do, can you fight? Can you do anything? I said, as a matter of fact, I can, you know? Um, and so when we did, they, and they were like, oh, great. So we did this elaborate, huge stunt fight with uh, those kind of like the Matrix. And it was me versus Chris Judge, Tilk. And he's about four times my size, you know, he's wide. And um, um, and I said, only on TV can I win this fight. But, <laughs> but man, it was like, yeah. <laughs> Man, it was a fight, bro. And I did ninety-eight percent of the whole thing. You know, it was it was, it was some, some nice, some really nice taekwondo kicks and punches and um, uh, some roundhouses and you know, I mean, just back fists and some really cool stuff. And um, I just remember Peter was like, "Nice, you know, we're gonna cut it all together. It's gonna, yeah. it's gonna be great." Then they had some guys come from Brazil who were um, Cop- Cop- uh, Capoeira. Capoeira. yeah 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 and these guys were like i'm looking at you you like you look super fit these guys were like you they were like super fit you know and they this one guy doubled me because i had to do like i had to spring up from from the ground off my back and onto my feet and there was a time when i could do that it's a hard um, move back in the eight it's a hard move especially and if you miss it a couple times action. you really don't want to try it again for a while it, it hurts landing right yeah there. it hurts yeah exactly yeah and um and I, um, I, I, I was a break dancer in the '80s, and and so that that kind of helped, you know. And I was like, I can I can do it. I just got to get into the rhythm of it and do it. And man, I just couldn't do it. Not with all the costume stuff on and everything, you know, the wardrobe. And um, they brought the double in, and this guy was just ripped. <laughs> so, but if you look at it, I mean, it, it, I think the camera caught his 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 flip up in the at the right distance you know because if you're unless you're really paying attention you can't tell maybe that that's not me <laughs> but um yeah but it was it you know i was like man i love this stuff you know and just watching them you know mm-hmm. do the capoeira you know the whole thing it, 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 they brought on some professional people to to help make this look great and um i look at it now i mean i had like four percent maybe body fat you know i i, I would just finished a, this rigorous um program and and like when i'm in shape i'm really lean and toned but i'm not big you know but i'm like i'm like more like a basketball like lean and toned yeah. and strong you know and 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 it worked you know it totally worked and and i, I you know i, I I'm, you know i'm i think when i hit when i hit age 30 for some reason my body chemistry shifted just like my dad said it would and you know i like just I, I couldn't go out to happy hour three times a week anymore all that was gone <laughs> so yeah so I, I was ready for this role, and 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 and, and, and I'm really proud. You know, to this day, I'm really proud of, of the, the, the commitment that I put into 
just getting into shape. And then the role came up just literally just as I finished mm. this 12 week program. So I, I was ready. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you, you said something that makes me ask this question. You know, we, we've had we've had plenty of folks on coming out of the, the film and the stunt world. And the fact that they hired you to do what could be and what turned out to be a very uh, physically intensive role and in, in, in the scene specifically, but they didn't know what your background was. So did they cater the choreography? Did, did the stunt folks work with you and say, what can you do? What do you know? Did that scene have genuinely your skill versus you kind of getting cookie yeah. cuttered into what they had already come up with? I think probably cookie, like cookie cuttered into what they had de had designed okay. in their minds. Um, and, and they want, I think they wanted to see if I could do it. Okay. Um, and I, I just, you know, like anything, I'll just, I'll give it my best, you know, and, yeah. and, 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 and until something goes wrong or, you know, it, maybe we need to try something different. Um, but, um, everything that they threw at me, I was able, I was able to, to, to do and to, and to really, I think, um, help portray the character. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, it was also a weapon that we used. It was like a giant staff. Um, um, and, and I think the word is Zach Nicotel. Try saying that five times. <laughs> Zach Nicotel, Zach Nicotel, Zach Nicotel. And, um, it's a, it's an alien weapon, you know, that is far more effective than, you know, any technology that we have, you sure. know, it's, just, it's, it's a, yeah, exactly. So, so I had to swirl, twirl this thing around, you know, and fight with it. And, and, um, it was, it was, it was fun. It was really fun. Um, they also, again, they had, you know, uh, a fabulous stunt uh, stunt um, team that can do those things, for, you know, expertly. Um, and I, I, I could do after doing Stargate. You know, I think the I was about thirty five, and I said, "Man, I really, really just miss all this so much." You and know? That's and what I, I was going to ask I, you because you're talking yeah, about it and you're yeah. smiling so wide. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, it's like it's. It, it, I think for a long time I had I've been trying to figure out how do I get really back into it and really go after my black belt, you know, and, 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 and continue, you know, as someone once told me the black belt is, is just the beginning, you know, and, um, I, um, I, um, about five years went by and Paul Wesley from the TV show, the vampire diaries, mm -hmm. Paul Wesley was, uh, was cast uh, along with myself to be these angels in this, this mini series on ABC family called fallen. It's a six hour mini series. And, um, uh, we had to, we had to train with guys who were like MMA guys and martial arts guys and, and boxers, uh, in Chatsworth, California for like um, six weeks. Hmm. And man, they got us into shape, man. I did not lift a single barbell or nothing. You know, and they, they, and, and I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Like, I, I remember looking at myself one day, I was like, wow, <laughs> you, you know, said with humility, I, 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 I'm, I'm looking ready, man, I'm ready to do this, you know, and, and uh, I, I felt fit and healthy. Yep. And, um, we, I, I had to do a fight. My character was kind of like Morpheus, and I had to do a fight where I have to fight like six warrior angels in this alley in Vancouver you know, at three o'clock in the morning. And um, we trained and trained and trained and trained and trained. And, and, and then I remember uh, Mike Gunther came up to me, this not court uh, choreographer, and he, he, he looked at me one day and he said, you're ready. <laughs> you know, I've been waiting for weeks for that, you know, and he said, you're ready, you know, nice. and uh, I'll see you in Vancouver. I said, great. And we did it. And um, I remember when we were training, man, they really, they put me through it, you know, they did. And, and they were impressed that I could do anything, you know, and, and, and they, they, they said, that's going to help us a lot. And, um, I remember, um, I forget this guy, this gentleman's name. He was so nice to me. Um, he was third, fourth degree black belt Taekwondo. And he, and he came up to me and said, Rick, you need to get back into this. And, uh, because you, you, this close, like you just need to commit to it and, and just follow through, do it, you know? And um, I, I, no one's ever said that to me before, you know, like, it really hit me, you know, and, and um, I said, I, I said, I think I think maybe I will, you know, and, you know, life happens, man, and I almost had a, a child, a child, um, when I was about 40, and I had a mis mm. girlfriend, had a miscarriage, and, you know, life happens and things happen, man, and, you know, 
And, you know, next thing you know, you wake up and you're 50. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, so you're, you're an actor, so I can do this. Let's, let's imagine an alternate world where yeah. you don't take Taekwondo. Right. It doesn't sound like you would have not become an actor. It sounds like that still would have happened based on what you've said. But what would have been different about your acting? Wow. And, and let's extend it. Let's make it bit let's make it a bigger question. What would have been different about life without about life, yeah. That time. I yeah, for sure. Um I I I, I know in my heart that that even though I, I studied for just a, a few short years, uh, that it has it's stayed with me and it's it's changed me um a lot, like tremendously. And, and, and um, I think um, it's, it's given me a, a spiritual um, it, sort of um, place, and in, 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 it's just in my being in terms of who I am. And, and, and um, I, um, I, I, I think I, I really don't think you can can't really put a price. You can't put a price on that. Uh, it, like it's, it becomes a part of you. And um, I have a respect and a, and a humility now, you know, because because of the time that I spent training in, in Taekwondo and, and and also just working with the professionals that I work with on camera as well, you know, who are, and I, you know, they, I have all the respect and humility, and and, and, and um, I sort of put myself in student mode again, you know, when I'm when I'm when I'm around someone, you know, and um, uh, it, 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 I'm for sure, I think it has given me a, a a way of relating to people and, 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 and myself. And I'm for sure not perfect. I can assure you of that. But um, uh, I, I like to think that it's, it's given me a, a, um, a sense of putting, keeping my feet on the ground, mm. you know, and, and um, just just kind of being aware of who I am and where I am. And, 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 and you know, my name's Rick. This is where I am. This is what time it is. It's right now, <laughs> you know. And and I, I value that, you know. Um, I, I so wish my nephews would, would study martial arts. I think they would love it, number one, and, and, and I think they would greatly benefit from it as well. Um, and they're young, you know, they're young guys, and, and um, you know, and uh, they, I think they, they have the time to do it, you know. Um, uh, and um, uh, it, it, it's 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 kind of one of those things where, like, I, 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 it was maybe I was in the right place at the right time, and you know. Bruce Lee was all the rage. I, I don't. I don't know. All I know is that I, that's, that I, I I fell in love with him and and also just martial arts films in general. Mm. You know everything from Master of the Flying Guillotine to <laughs> you know all the all this Jackie Chan, all this stuff in between. You know and, yeah. and uh, 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 the Last Dragon. You know and um, all the all the samurai films that have come out um, in the last twenty years, uh, including Last Samurai. And I, I just love it all, man. It's just, there's, a, there's a spiritual spiritual aspect of it that I think is so attractive uh, that, to, to my soul, I think. Mm -hmm. Full disclosure, I have a little bit of an agenda, you know, in getting you to go back and train because I think that would be awesome. <laughs> but I was, talk I was talking to a friend not long ago and she said something similar that you said about your dad. Uh, she, you know, she's like, I want to get my kids into it. And her and her husband, you know, they'd found a school nearby and I'd help them. They're in North Carolina and, you know, looked at the websites and said, you know, yeah, this looks like a good choice. I think this one over this one. And, oh, yeah, this one fits better in our schedule. And she said, you know, it's, it looks like the kids and my husband are going to go do it. And I said, well, and then she went on to say, you know, I hope they stick with it and all that. And I said, well, why not? you? If you want them to see that it's important. Why don't you do it? So wow. maybe maybe put that back on you a little bit, you know, if you if you want to yeah. show them, you know. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a it's an excellent, excellent, excellent idea. Yeah, <laughs> and, and this this is where so this is where having having the body of of conversations that I have, you know, I get to go and, go into the archives because people will often say, and and you don't strike me as this person, but you know, we have people from all over the world that watch and listen to this and. You know, some of those yeah. folks fell out of training and, and you know, I constantly poke at them a little bit from afar and say, you know, I hope you get back into it. But there's a natural reaction to say, well, you know, I'm getting older and this because well, we're all getting older. But then you get someone like Ron Van Cleef, who came on the show. I'm, I don't know if you know that gentleman. I'm um, well, I, I know Lee Van Cleef. 
So Ron, is, is, Ron, that, is that any Ron, relation at all? I, I don't know. I don't know. He did okay. a little bit of film. Yeah. He stepped into the UFC at 50. He's he's a bit of a competitive wow. legend. Oh, yeah. Seriously? Yeah. 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 Um, at, at age 50. Wow. I, I wow. believe he was 50. And wow. started training BJJ in his 70s. Wow. Now, one could make the argument Ron Van Cleef is one of the toughest human beings that anyone has ever known because he is. Um, but he was very <laughs> clear when he was on the show not long ago that even now he's 80, 81, he gets mad if any of the young guys go easy on him. Wow. Yeah, he's like, it might take wow. me three days before I can go back, but I don't let them take it easy <laughs> on him. And, that, and that's, all, uh, that's all to say... You know, it's never too late. Um, absolutely, yeah. Um, I, I've been, I, I've been threatening to go, to get, to get up and commit. You know, and really go for it. You know, yeah. um, I have a friend. She, um, she lives in, uh, she used to live in Florida. She recently moved to, I believe, South Carolina. She's about forty. My friend Jennifer, ex police officer, and um, she, when the pandemic began, she began studying. Uh, I believe Kempo. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, she said it, it was like the best thing ever to happen to her. You know? uh, single lady. And, you know, um, she said it like it has literally shifted her whole life, you know. Yeah. And, and um, I, I, I love that, man. You know, I, 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 I love that so much. She showed me a video of her doing a, uh, one of her forms. And, and, and they always, I was like, wow, wow, you know. <laughs> I mean, it was her, but it wasn't her. Like it was like a different. Right. Like it was like she had be become, you know, like she someone was else, you know. And yeah, she was. <laughs> and and uh, just the, the the joy that she has when she talks about it, you know, she talks to me about it, and, and uh, uh, it, it's it's so wonderful, you know. Uh, and um, what's the actor who did? Um, uh, Love and Marriage, Ed. Oh, uh, uh, wonderful sitcom. O'Neill, isn't that his last name? Ed O'Neill. Yeah. Ed so he he yeah. has a black belt in BJJ. We've been trying to get him on the show for for ages. Yeah. Anybody out there can can get us there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I I I, I assumed that you had already had him on your show. Um, I, I I've never met him. Um, I think he's amazing comedic he talent is, and, is, and, and dramatic actor. So he's, he's fabulous. Yeah. But what I didn't know was that he, you know, he had committed to getting to, to studying um, a BJJ and getting his black belt. And then he said something. He said, he said, um, he said, I just had to tell myself I have to show up. I have to show up. I have, you know, and it, with his enormous work schedule and family and all the stuff happening in you know with TV show, he's like, I have to commit to this. And I'm, going, I'm going to show up. And man, I, I, that. That inspired the hell out of me, I have to be honest with you. You know, like I, I was like, well, well, hell, if if, if Ed O'Neill can find the time to do that, then then why can't why can't I? You know, right. um, to to me, and, to me, training is is I kind of think of it like sleep, right? If you if you didn't know what sleep was, if you didn't understand sleep, you're some alien being. Sleep takes away our time, right? But but if we sleep adequately the time we have otherwise is is more valuable right we can do more be more right. we live longer right like and so to me as someone who's been training pretty much my whole life that's kind of how i see wow. my training right wow. like if i if i don't train and i you know training goes in waves and you know the, the last couple of years because of all of this uh physical training is not quite where i would want it to be because there are only so many hours in the day but I still train right. a little bit every day. I'm still yeah. punching and kicking something. <laughs> That's awesome. Because what's life without it? Right. Right. What's uh if you don't mind me asking, what is what oh, is please. what is your discipline? So I, I grew up with karate and when I moved to Vermont, uh, I started training Taekwondo. And right. uh because of this show, uh, I heard from the name Bill Wallace, Superfoot Bill Wallace. Yeah, Superfoot um, Wallace, yeah. Uh, was was introduced to Bill and now trained wow. with that organization, and I've earned earned a black belt with Bill. 
Fantastic. I'm, I'm, wow. I, I live a blessed life. Yeah. No it. doubt, man. I, I just remember, I remember, you know, like I would read Black Belt Magazine and I would see, you know, you know, super foot Wallace, you know. He I, made like, a great wow. cover, right? Because like, because that kick, that yeah, kick always looked great that on kick. a cover. That kick, and he can, he can still like, do it. I mean, he would, he would say it's not the wow. same, but to us mortals, it yeah, he can still do it. It's the same. <laughs> it still looks great. Um, I, is he? I'm, I'm guessing he's probably 77. I believe that is correct. Yeah, like like late maybe like late seventies. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's, sure he's exactly seventy seven. Somebody somebody's going to check me on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give or that's take a year. That's incredible. And yeah. he still does I, seminars all over the place. Wow, I, I just love that. I, I I have thought about him over the years. I'm like, wow, well, remember what happened to Superfoot? You know, Bill Superfoot Wallace. Um, and then there was um. Gosh, well, I, you know, I think about uh, Jim Kelly. Yeah. I think about John John Saxton as well. Yeah. And you know, well, but, well, Jim Kelly was Jim Jim Kelly was a real much you know may rest oh, in peace. He, he was sure. he was a real martial martial artist. Yeah, for sure. And then, but but John Saxton was too, I think. Or or did yes. he study for the for Enter the Dragon? He was okay. My, my understanding is that he was yeah. a, re- a legitimate martial artist. Yeah. Almost yeah. everybody on that movie movie set was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's so cool to see because I've seen the movie. I'm sure, like yourself, like you know, yeah. so many times, you know, dozens, dozens of times, and and will you know? And it's just like when they're all outdoors fighting, like in mm-hmm. this, 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 this giant, you know, you know, field, you know, and, and, and um, uh, uh, when you know, um. When John, well, when John Saxon comes, I just remember when he, one of my favorite scenes is when he, you're trying to figure out how each person is going to fight. And when John right. Saxon comes up and it's just all just punches, man, strikes, 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 <laughs> and just, you know, deadly and quick, you know, <laughs> you know, and then he does a couple of kicks, but then Bruce is like, you know, he does the thing where, um, uh, where he holds his wrist up. Um, with the other gentleman, with the other, I forget the, the, the guy's name, the, the scar across his face. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and he's like, kapow! You know, <laughs> like, oh my God. You're like, this guy, the other guy doesn't have a chance. <laughs> you know, it's such a, it was such a, you know, and then, of course, Jim Kelly's, you know, infamous fight with Han, you know, inside of Han's office, you know. And, like, we have seen, my brother and I and our friend, we've seen this, this film, that film, so many times. Um, and um, I, I think um, I think it's I, you know s- sadly you know um, Mr. Lee isn't with us anymore. You know, but man, I, I wonder what he would be like, you know, if he, if he was if he was still here. <laughs> it, it's a question that we all ask often because here we are, fifty years after his passing, and he's still the most recognizable martial artist in the world. That's, wow. that's quite the legacy, right? Like you could show Bruce Lee's picture to anybody, pretty much anywhere in the world, and they know who he yeah. is. Yeah, you can't say that about yeah. anybody you can, you, else. I know. Yeah. Maybe you can, Chuck you Norris. Can literally, maybe Chuck Norris. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, to see them, you know, um, I mean, well, the, the the fight they had, you know, in the Rome, in the Colosseum in Rome, that, that was, yeah. you know. That, Man, I was actually thinking about that a couple of days ago. I, one of my friends, she just came back from there. and She showed me a picture. Of, she's standing in front of the Coliseum. And I've been there myself. And I didn't go in, but I was on the outside. It always makes me think about the, the Chuck Norris Bruce Lee fight. You know? yeah. And it's, it's just iconic. in the Coliseum, two warriors, you know, and it was such respect and heart. You know, like that he that they had for each other. It was amazing. Yeah. You know, extremely well done. And and um, I could talk about stuff. So <laughs> so here man. here's a question for you, and I'm gonna not let you use <laughs> and answer with Enter the Dragon because we've just talked about that. But imagine you know we right. get some kind of interesting time machine, and you can put yourself into any role that has at least some martial arts element to it from any film in history. Wow. It's not Enter the Dragon. Okay. Who, who would who would you have wanted to bring to life? Wow, man! Wow. Well, I think about. Let me see. Gosh. I thought Bruce Lee was great in 
Green Hornet. <laughs> that is a you polarizing know, like he, role. People either loved him in that or hated him. Or, in yeah. Sense. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I, I think, um, I, it, like, you're looking, I watched the Green Hornet really because, because of him. Yeah. You know, like, I that's think most why people did. Green Hornet. Yeah. Cause we were like, this guy is badass. Yeah. You know, and and maybe that was my first inkling of of Bruce Lee, and then into because we were so young, then into the Dragon. Maybe right after that, maybe. Um, but we like loved him. We thought Cato was just the coolest. He looked so cool, and he had the mask and the hat, you know. And he was fast and quick, and 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 we're like, why isn't he the superhero? <laughs> you know, right. instead of the other guy. You know, yeah. And, if, if it had been 30 years later he probably would have been you know there's a probably, cultural exactly, boundary exactly. That, that you know exactly. if you look at it yeah. in context the fact that he was there at all was a big deal yeah it was a huge huge that. deal for sure yeah 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 and you have to look at i mean you brought up an excellent point you have to look at the the, the times and the cultural context and and and, 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 and you know that, that he was living in and, and the racism that was there and the sort of infrastructure of hollywood and you know Nowadays, like now, you, you, you hey, give him, give him, give him seven pictures, <laughs> right. three picture deal with MGM, you know, yeah. um, you know, and and um, sadly, you know, um, I, I, you know, I think he paved the way for a lot of people for oh, sure, for sure, um, for sure, yeah, and um, uh, you know, I, I, I can only hope that you know some kind of way he knows that, you know? but um, I, I don't know, man, I um, I, I gosh. I, that's a really, really. I mean, you, that's you a can, really, really. You good can question. get back. You can get back to me on that. How's that? How's that? <laughs> okay, yeah, we can get, we can get back to that. I, 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 I just had this idea that when all those ninja films came, a lot of the ninja mm. flicks came out in the eighties. The eighties ones. Sho- yeah, with starring um, Sho Kasugi. Yeah. Uh, if I said his last name, yeah, I think so. And uh, and Sho Kasugi, uh, uh, Kasugai. And um, man, I love him to this day. I love him. I think he's. I think he's about seventy now. He's just phenomenal. He was in a movie that I saw on Netflix called Ninja Assassin, and mm. he plays the. Um, um, did you ever see that one? I I don't. I saw it go by. I don't remember if I watched it because yeah. a lot, of, a lot yeah. of them blur together. You watch enough yeah. of them and they start getting blurry. Yeah, yeah. And I think I, I caught it like. Probably, gosh, probably 2018 or 2019, or maybe maybe even before that. But um, I said, "Oh, this looks this looks interesting. It looks pretty cool, you know." And um, uh, he plays the like the headmaster of this nin- this private ninja, you know, clan yeah. of assassins, you know. And and yeah. all, and, uh, and all they're all teenagers. They're all 14, 13 years old. And this one kid falls in love with this other kid, and they make a plan to escape hmm. one night, one stormy rainy night you know very very picturesque you know imagery and and um he makes it but she doesn't mm. like she can't she can't quite climb over the wall and then she falls back down or something and then they capture her and they torture the hell out of her you know and but he he survives and he makes it he flash forward 10 15 years later he's 25 and you know um uh, just on the run for his life because they're trying to find him and it was really cool how they did it, like how they can sort of. I know it's movie stuff, but you know, yeah. I, I'm not an I'm not a ninja, <laughs> but, but it's like like they can sort of like sense each other, like okay, they're com- they're coming now. I can feel it, you know. <laughs> and um, um, but Shoka Sagai plays the the headmaster. Man, he's one of his best performances. Like it was amazing, you know. Like he was just like you didn't want to cross paths with him. You know, you can do stuff that sort of transcends physics you know yeah. <laughs> yeah. so yeah i don't know maybe something like that i don't know <laughs> all right it works, it works. Uh, let's, let's bring it back to reality what what about upcoming roles what, what do you got in the works that you can talk about uh man i um i spent last year in new york working um i played a dad on gossip girl season two um and uh, it's on hbo max now um, and it's, it's, you know, it's one of those roles where, it, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a parent, which is fine, but I, I always tell, I always tell my agents, I'm like, I don't mind, you know, I, I've been playing a dad for 15 years now, but 
I just want it to be interesting, you know, mm. and instead of go to bed, do your homework. So the producers told me that, um, and they were so, like, you would love them. They're, they're so nice. And they were like, we promised you're going to, we're going to give you some really like, you know, heady stuff to do. We were just, we we're just trying to figure it out. So it turns out I ended up becoming sort of like this. Uh, gosh. I, they they described it as Jeff Bezos, but like the dark, dark, dark side of Jeff Bezos. Like he's these these rich Upper East Side New Yorkers who you know they they own a pharmaceutical company and they become they become rich and like outrageously you know rich and and and, and powerful and they just put people under them you know and um, that's got to be I fun said, to play. I'm, it, it was fun because I you know I'm, I'm me you know this <laughs> me that you're talking to now is Rick. But like I had to, I had to just go to this other, find this other dark, evil thing that's it's somewhere out there or in me or out there, and and, and play this character and and, um, and also still be a dad, you know. So I said, okay, now that, that's it. that's interesting. I like that, you know. That's good acting stuff. So that was fun. Um, and sadly, it won't be there. Won't be a season three. Um, I think it was too. It was just too much for I think HBO Max. Like it was. I don't know if it was financially too much. And we were getting locations like the Guggenheim Museum, you know, stuff like that, you know. Um, yeah, that stuff is very pricey. Sure. You know? So, yeah. So, um, so I don't, I don't know why it was canceled, but it was canceled. And um, uh, what I've been working on since 2021 is an independent film that I, that I um, wrote myself. And, oh, um, cool. Uh, yeah. And um, I... I started, I wrote the first part, I wrote it, the first draft myself, and then a friend of mine gave me some really great notes. She's a terrific young writer and actor, my friend Shanee Schwartzman. Hi, Shanee. <laughs> and um, I told them about, about you and me tonight. <laughs> so they said, okay, great, mention our names. Awesome. And um, yeah, and uh, um, I said, you know what, your notes are so terrific. I, I would love for you to write a couple of scenes in, in this. And she, and she said, are you sure? And I said, yes. So, um, so now it's co-written with, with me and Shanee Schwartzman. And um, it's essentially a character, a character that that I've been really kind of wanting to play. Mm. I think for thirty years, man. And really, what he, what what he is is sort of a modern day um, superhero, and uh, but more kind of like grounded in reality, like in the world of of spies and and uh, uh, espionage, and kind of like the equalizer. Mm. Uh, but, Sounds but, like that character but, might was, need some martial arts skills. Absolutely. <laughs> And I've been, I've been like, you know, I've been trying to find a vehicle that would give me that kind of guy, mm. and also a, a, a character, a character where I can, I can do some fighting, you know, and and do some cool stuff, you know, and and have a a great um, a, a, a stunt choreographer who can design some some really awesome stuff for me to do. So um, we have those elements now in place, and we shot like a, a five minute. Um, teaser short film. Oh, fun! Um, like, is that month. teaser public? I, I just saw. It's not. Okay. But, but man, I looked at some of the footage. Man, it's it's spot on, man. Like it's, it really oh. is. And and I have to say, I I, I think I picked a, a really solid group of uh, team around me. You know, mm. um, the 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 director um, who who directed the teaser, he is a martial artist himself. Uh, oh. He studied kung fu, and um, he lives in Manchester, England. And and um, uh, he, he you you would love him. His name is James Twyman Twyman, and um, James um, said, "I'm going to design the choreography. Um, I, I'm a martial artist, and and um, I live in China for a year, and I studied you know, at a temple." Oh, I was like, "Yeah, oh. I'd love to talk to him. Let's get him on the show." Yeah, show. I'll connect you. I'll for sure connect you. Yeah, he's you he's. He looks like Jim Kelly, like his afro is like this high, and he's like so cool. And I and, and I said you, I said you know you remind me of Jim Kelly. He said he said man, he's like in, in this British accent. He's like man, it's like my favorite guy, man. And and, and um and he, I think he wants to do like a write a script about Jim Kelly and, and, and play him. You know, I said go do it, man. So Jim Kelly yeah. would deserve so, some kind of retrospective for sure. Oh, for for sure. That, yeah, that man broke yeah, ground. For sure. He, he broke some ground, man. You know, Black Belt Jones, and you know, the movies, all the movies he did, and that's in that seventies era, you know. Yeah. And, and um, but so yeah, we the footage looks great, and um, uh, uh, you know, I got myself in a decent shape, you know, and and um, 
I think all that's gone out the window since I, it's my birthday, though. <laughs> but last month, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's it's cool to see a character that's an older guy who is throwing down. You know, I love well, it's, the, it's the happening. Denzel Washington. Six, yeah. It's happening, baby. Like you John got Wick Denzel 4. He's 68. I mean, what's Absolutely. the average age of the cast in John Wick 4? You know, it's not. Absolutely. They're not in their bro. 20s. Keanu's 59. Exactly. And that is to me, to me, like I want to stay on that level and that track. And um, because I, you know, it's like I look at Liam Neeson, you know, in the movies, in the Taken movies, and I'm like, I love him. I freaking love him. He's, Does anyone know, even know how old Liam is? He, I, I, he could, if you told me, I, I know he's not, but if I had just yeah. met, like, discovered who he was, and you said, oh, he's 45, yeah. I'm like, okay, you know, he seems yeah, exactly, hasn't yeah. aged in 20 years. Yeah. As an age, you know, and I think it's, I think it's, it's inspiring, man, to, you know, for me. And it's like, I love it. <laughs> I love that, that we can have older actors who can still be the lead and still carry something. And, 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 and still, it's still a wonderful story that, that, yeah. you know, that we're telling, you know, I mean, I, so much of TV and a lot of stuff on the st streaming platforms and no disrespect, you know, but. I can't. I can't relate to to a lot of it. I'm. I, I'm just not. I'm not in my. I'm not 25 anymore. You know, like I want something with a character who maybe he's maybe he's divorced. Maybe he has a teenage daughter or a son. You know, and maybe he's just trying to handle life. But he's also saving the world. You know, and that's right. essentially what um, this character is that I that I created. Yeah. I don't. There's a movie, and I, I brought it up once on the show. Uh, there's a movie on Netflix called Lou. It's an action okay. film. Starring Allison Janney, who in oh, the wow. film is playing a grandmother <laughs> who okay. is a complete and utter badass. Wow. And and when I saw that and when I saw how good it was, I said, right. this, this this is indicative of a change. The fact that this film right. was made and right. put out, and the fact that it was so well done and not put out in like a you know low budget kind of prove you wrong kind of a thing. I said, right. there's there's opportunity now. I think I think we just added oh, for sure. that film added yeah. 20 years to act, you know, especially women. Women struggle with this. They talk about it in the act. For sure. You know, yeah. We just added 20 more years, yeah. 30 more years to women's yeah. acting careers. Yeah, absolutely. And you said it's starring Alice and Jenny too, huh? Yeah. Wow, man. And she, I, I love her, fashion. first of all. Yeah. Oh, she's absolutely wonderful. love her. Wonderful, and and to know that she's in, I gotta I gotta write this down. It's called Lou. Lou, L O U. I'm hoping I'm getting this right. I'm okay. now second guessing myself, but I'm I'm pretty darn sure. Okay. Because um, that sounds like, man, that sounds like something I would totally watch. Like like probably tonight. Yeah, let me know what you think. It's 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 good, okay, you know. And, sure. and I think you know you you brought up an interesting point, and I think we can, you know, we can connect some dots here it's the relatability right when when we go to yeah go to the movies when we watch tv yeah we want to get out of where we are but we we have to care about yeah. the characters and how do you care about care, care about people in general real or fictitious you have to have something in common with them you gotta have something at the end of the day you know you really have to i mean you can have a great like this character has been sort of and I, I told Shani and James this, you know, I, I said, um, I said, this character has been kind of kind of walking around in my dreams for about 15 years, maybe. I just didn't know how to what to do with him. Mm -hmm. You know, like I knew that there was something there and I made an early, early draft at an early script and it was horrible. You know? But but at least I sort of got something out. Right. You know? Yeah, and and um and I wasn't ready yet to write a, a thing, you know. And then when the pandemic came, you know, we we were all allotted this uh, a, a, a lot of time, you know. Um, and essential workers still had to, of course, work. Um, and I consider myself just very blessed, man, that I I was able to you know to turn on my computer and you know order food and stuff like that, you know. Like I know a lot of people didn't have that 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 that, uh, that opportunity. And I, I watched a lot of stuff that I had not only worked on, but stuff that I had heard about. Mm. And I, I kind of re-educated myself on, on the movies that I love and um, re-watched um, all kinds of stuff, you know, um, 
martial arts films as well, mm-hmm. of course. And and I and I, I kept asking myself, what do I want to do? What do I want to mm-hmm. do? Well, I want this character to to live on the on the page. You know, like I really want to bring him to life. I I, I think I've got to figure out how to do it. And when I met my when my friend Janice, I just start, just start writing. And 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 uh, I wrote the first scene I wrote was on my phone. It was a, um, uh, and I wrote it as as, as a text message mm. to myself. And then I emailed it to myself, and then I I sent it to Shani, and I said, "What do you think?" She says, "It's got legs. Just just keep going, you know." And that took weeks and weeks, you know. And and finally, I had a you know a, a vomit of the first draft, if you will. Yep. Um, but it wasn't. It wasn't, and I never said I was a writer. I'll say that, but I, I got something out, you know. And and after months of rewrites and, 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 and here, read this, give me some notes, all of that, you know. Um, uh, we, what we what we created, I think, was was a, a really solid character that 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 I love and care about, and and I think people will. And also, um, uh, the story kind of the story. I think is, I humbly say, I think it's. It's really cool. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I look forward to checking it out. You know, I, I know this stuff takes time, but when you know yeah. when it hits, you know, I'll, I'll I'll be there. And if you need someone to get beat up and thrown around, once in a while, <laughs> just give me a shout. You know, yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll come down. I'll, I'll you, know, go, you know I'll, throw me through a fake yeah. glass window or something. You know, I'll, I'll, I'm game. Are you are you in, are you are you in New York or like like where are you? Uh, I'm in Vermont. Los Angeles? You're in Vermont, okay. So you so, man. I you know I the the dream, uh, which which um, I I it's must happen. It must we must make this reality. Is um, um, we want to shoot the whole thing, um, uh, or most of it in Washington D.C. and maybe oh, cool. part, partly like in New York because it takes place in the world of espionage and law enforcement and stuff like that, and that's the world that the character lives in. As well as the other characters, um, so we have CI, we have FBI, we have um, you know DC Metro Police. Like they're all kind of characters in the elements in the, in the story. But our hero, um, uh, played by myself, he, he you know he's kind of on the world stage. But home is DC, mm-hmm. and um, I spent a lot of time in Washington DC. I love Washington DC. And, uh, I think it's a wonderful city. And it's so cool, you know, all the museums and everything. Great restaurants, and, but there's something about that city is fascinates me. And, and, and um, so when I started writing, I, I like I, I said, well, I think I know who he is, and I think I know where he lives. I think mm-hmm. I think I know what he does for a living. <laughs> and um, I'm going to make him just a, a unique sort of um, uh, uh, equalizer slash Jason Bourne kind of guy, really. You know, yeah. Um, but um, you know, we we we. Uh, I, I think it's important to surround yourself with, with excellent and hopefully real martial artists like yourself because um, accidents happen and also um, uh, like the real fight real fighters and you know, they understand where the camera is and everything they they know how to make the, the fight look even like so much better <laughs> you know and um, I did a fight I did a fight with uh, do you know Will Yoon Lee? No, I don't think so. Uh, uh, William, he, he's, he's an actor who is a, a real martial artist, uh, and um, I believe his family owns various martial arts um, dojos around the country, I believe. Okay. Um, so he, come, he comes from a family of martial artists. And, um, uh, he's just the nicest guy ever. <laughs> he's so kind, very, very handsome guy, very sweet. And I had to fight Will in this, this mini series that I was telling you about. Like I took out the five, six other guys before him, and then he's the last guy. It's a total western, you know. <laughs> and, um, dum dum boom, you know. <laughs> classic, good, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know. I yeah. Those. And man, man, he came at me with a flying Superman punch, like you know, like he's in the air, and I'm supposed to block him like this with my two hands, like that, you know. And the last thing I remember was his fist coming at me like this. And then I was out. <laughs> <laughs> did they use it they didn't use it but oh i can't i can tell you that the that the well i can tell you two things um 
take two was the perfect take. <laughs> everyone's everyone's wide awake. And um uh poor Will, like he he, he felt horrible. Sure he felt terrible, I, yeah. I said, man, it's I said I said, man, it's all right. It's all right. I'm a, I'm okay. But I was out for I they say probably under a minute I was knocked out. And um I just remember like I I remember waking up to this, Rick, you're right, you're right, Rick, Rick, you know, like that. And then I was like, whoa, you know, and, uh, but I can, it was, it was like one of those things where I'm like, I'm glad it happened because <laughs> at least now I know kind of what that feels like. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want it to happen again, but um, I think it's, it, it kind of points to a couple of things. And I, number one, because Will's a, like yourself, he's a pro, you know, he, 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 he knows where, this is versus this, you know, and I think it was it was a situation of we were it was three o'clock in the morning and we're pretty all of us are pretty wiped out, that, yeah. you know, and I, I think if, if the if the production team had scheduled that fight, let's say at 10 a.m., you know, and, or yeah. 6 p.m. instead of 3 a.m. I think I don't, I don't think I would have got knocked out at all. I think I think it would have been we were, OK, that was good. Let's do another one, you know, you know. Yeah. Where can people find you? You go on social media. You got a website. Where, I am. Where do we find I, I kind of have this. I'm on Instagram. That's all I use. I have had this kind of love hate relationship with social media, and um, I think most of us. Anyone? It, yeah. 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 I, I. I. It was like last July. I was. <laughs> I was sitting in a cigar shop. Uh, I, I like cigars. I was sitting in a cigar shop in DC. I was having some whiskey and I was smoking a cigar. And then I said, I'm done. I'm just done with it. And I canceled it right there. <laughs> and I, my last picture is me holding a whiskey and, and saying, you know, adios. And um, I was off of it for four and a half months. And I got a flood of, I don't know if you've ever, you've ever just sort of taken a break, but two days after you take a, even a break, people are like, are you okay? Are you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine, you know? And um, man, I, I was off of it. And I got to tell you, I was doing something which I had just used to do before social media. I was actually looking at people in the eyes mm. and having coffee with people and, you know, hey, let's go out to dinner, you know, uh, or let's just go for a walk or something. Let's walk the dogs together, you know? And and uh, um, I, I hate that, you know, I, I get it. I, I just hate that so much of, of how we interact is, um, you know, and I'm guilty of it too. You know, is is you 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 know you you're looking down at your phone. You know, mm -hmm. da, 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 da. yeah. And I I I just, I just want to be more present in the world. That's all. I completely get it. I, I'm I'm with you. It's yeah. you know, there's a there's an upside to it. You know, there's a marketing element. Yeah. I'm sure your agent wasn't thrilled. Oh, for sure that you did that. Yeah. Uh, but it, like anything, it's about balance. Right. You right. Know, we can't we can't live with these things attached to our face. You watch a lot of kids now. And even if they don't have it, they're still like this. Right. They, they've right. formed into that shape. Right. But it, it feels like right. it's correcting. I feel like the pendulum swung and it's we, we've we've got a backswing on it now. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. But don't you ever do you ever worry like, well, OK, well. What 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 what's going to be the next thing in five years? You know, it'll it'll like we've got Twitter, we've got Facebook, we've got uh, TikTok, we've got yeah. Instagram. What's what's going to be the next thing, man? You know, because there was a time when before all of that, there was this thing called MySpace, right? You know, yeah. And before that, there was Friendster. The, there was Friendster. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's exactly right. That's and, exactly right. you know, there was a time and, when nobody thought Facebook would be replaced. And guess what? Facebook's been replaced. I mean, they've had, I believe, consecutive right. quarters of 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 loss. And right. you know, there will always be right. something new. You know, we all, we're human nature, right? We want the new, shiny. Well, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I, um, I like you said, it, I think it's, I think I'm just, just trying to find the balance, you know, the balance of, of it all. Like, man, I went to Puerto Rico last year. Finally, been wanting to go for years. I finally went to, to Puerto Rico and, and, and I didn't even, and it was so nice to be in the sunshine. And I didn't even take a, I took a lot of pictures, but I didn't post a single one on Instagram. Like, I was just like, I am just enjoying this and, yeah. you know, this time, you know, and, and um, uh, uh, just, just being in the Caribbean and, and um, you know, 
you see people on vacation and they're just, it becomes an Instagram vacation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've done that a couple of times too. You know, it's like, we got to get that picture. <laughs> I get it. I get it. It's, it's balanced. It's balanced. Yeah. So yeah. given given that our audience is predominantly active martial artists, um, you know, and we'll, I'm sure we'll have some some people come in because this is, a, as you said, this is a different sort of conversation for you. So we'll, we'll end up with some folks who don't typically listen to the show and, and may not train. But given that most of them do, what would you say to them as we close up here? Wow, man. Um... I would say I, I um, uh, keep training and uh, um, uh, you know just just keep it in your life and and um, I'm so grateful for you know what what martial arts for me taekwondo has, has done for me um, even though it was a sh short period of, of my life it, it stayed with me all these years and, and it's surprising how like I remember pretty much everything you know. I remember basic form one, two, and three. I, I remember all the different exercises we did. I remember I, I can still I can still hear Master Lee's voice in my head. Yeah, uh, I remember him reprimanding me. I said, "Ricky, do ten more push-ups." You know, and I would get on the ground and do ten more push-ups. He was hard on me, but he I, I I I now see why. You know, like he he pushed me a little harder um, because I think he saw potential in me. You know. And but it was it, it wasn't like hard heart, but it was like more it was kind of like a it was like kind of like a tough love you know mm -hmm. type thing, and 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 um it paid I remember it paid off man we did a tournament in Ann Arbor Michigan, and um uh he saw my potential in doing uh I remember him telling me he said he said he, 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 to the whole classroom I had to spar against this I'm, it's like I could see it man like it just happened uh, you know a few days ago there was a young kid named Milo. And I remember Milo and I had to spar um, in front of the class, and 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 Milo got you know he 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 he, he beat me in the fight you know, um, and uh, Master Master Lee's Miss Lee okay, everyone Milo is a better fighter than Ricky, but um, Ricky is better at um, at, his, um, at, at his forms. You know, and and I, I was like, wow, you know, like he, he saw that, in me, you know, and um, sure enough, um, when I went to Ann Arbor to uh, uh, to compete in, in this in this tournament, there's a there's a picture of me and all of the we were all in Ann Arbor, Michigan. It's like 1981. That's the one picture I wanted. I, I'll see if I can get my mom or my dad. Please. To me. I'll, I'll forward it over to you. Yeah, um, we we um, we did really well that day. I'll never forget. And um, very humbly say I did really well in my forms. You know, like I I, I, I placed I believe second or somewhere. I, I don't I didn't get the number one, but I was like right I was right I believe number two or something. I can't remember, but it was like I I did really well, man. You know, and and um, um, uh, I, I, I that kind of had a nice through line for for me later um, when I became a dancer. I had already been kind of, I had already done martial arts. And then when dancing came along in my life, I was a break dancer. I was a committed break dancer mm -hmm. um, for about five, four years. And the early 1980s, 1983, 84, all the stuff that I learned, you know, from Master Lee, like I, 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 I had it in me, you know, I, I, I was pretty fearless, you know, and, and, and dancing is about form. And it's about movement and space and using your body, you know. And um, my brother and I um, taught ourselves how to how, how to dance. Um, my mom taught us initially when we were really really little. I always say we were moonwalking before Michael Jackson, so <laughs> we were moonwalking in 1972. Maybe Michael was too. But um, when the when the whole craze came out in the 80s with the moonwalking and MJ and everything, like we we were like, yeah, we're gonna do that. You know, we taught ourselves how to do that, and um, we ended up competing on. Um, very early reality TV show called Dance Fever, and they flew us out to Hollywood. We were 18, 19 years old, and, and um, we competed on national TV. You know, and you look at all the stuff that I look at all the stuff of video of us dancing back then, and I can see all the martial arts in, in, in our moves, you know, and and especially my and it's like one of those things that it, it stayed, it had stayed with me, and and it's a part of me, and 
um, um, you know, I, I carry it with me, you know, uh, like all the time, you know. So, yeah, and and uh, uh, it's not. I'm not too old. <laughs> I'm not too old to get back in there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what did you think? Good conversation, right? I really enjoyed talking to Rick. Rick, thank you for coming on. Uh, just a, a fun, a fun chat. And we chatted for a little while after. Just he, He's got some cool stuff going on. I'm looking forward to this movie that he's putting together. Super pumped. You know, I think anytime someone has spent as long as he has kind of chewing on what this artistic expression is going to be, in this case, what this character looks like, it's something that I'm excited to see because they tend to end up with detail and nuance. Um, for those of you who don't know that, that's kind of the story of, of the novel that I wrote. It was in my brain for a while and it was exciting to get out. And anytime someone's excited to create a piece of art, I tend to enjoy it more than if it follows some kind of formula like a lot of TV and movies do these days. If you want to go deeper on this episode or any of the others we've done, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Sign up for the newsletter there or at our other website. Use the code PODCAST15. Join the Patreon. Check out the family page, whistlekick.com slash family. But you also might consider having me out as teach a seminar at your school. We can do that. And we can probably do it for less money than you think. Uh, the goal with these is not to make a ton of money. It's really to cover expenses and sh spread what we do. Can't do it for free. But... This is not a, a, an expensive endeavor, and I really like doing it, which is why we keep the cost down. But something else that I enjoy doing, we keep the cost down on, is our consulting offerings. If you have a martial arts school and you are not working with a consultant, I will say with almost 100% certainty you should be. And there's a good chance that we're going to be the best fit for you. Why? Because of our approach. If you've been a fan of the show for a while, you know the things that are important to me, and they're probably important to you, and we translate those into the way we consult with schools. You want more money, you want more students, you want more uh, profit, you want to open another location. I, I don't know. There's so many things that you might want to do to create the martial arts school of your dreams. We can help you get there. We will help you get there. All you have to do is reach out. Jeremy at whistlekick.com. That's my personal email address. If you want to follow us on social media, and I hope you do in all the places, we are at Whistlekick everywhere you could think of. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.